Eile mit Weile. More haste, less speed. That's what we call the game Ludo in Switzerland. And what a good motto it is for learning a language. Constant, steady progress without getting into a panic before the exams. In this module, we're going to talk to you about where to put the verbs in a German sentence. A very important thing, as the verbs have a pivotal role around which everything else revolves. If you know where to place the different parts of the verb in a sentence, you're well on the way to getting the word order right. And why do I say different parts of the verb? Well, listen and find out for yourself. As you know by now, a verb is a word that indicates an action, like singing, dancing, eating, or an attitude to an action, like can or must. You also probably know that the verb is the second idea or element in a main clause in German. Ich fahre nach Sydney. Er trinkt zu viel Kaffee. In English, if you start a sentence with the subject, then the verb is often the second element too. I drive to Sydney. He drinks too much coffee. But unlike in English, this is an ironclad rule in German. So if we put something other than the subject at the beginning of a sentence for emphasis, like morgen, vielleicht, or mit meinem Vater, the subject makes way, moving after the verb. Ich fahre morgen nach Sydney. Becomes... Morgen fahre ich nach Sydney. Ich fahre vielleicht nach Sydney. Becomes... Vielleicht fahre ich nach Sydney. Ich fahre mit meinem Vater nach Sydney. Becomes... Mit meinem Vater fahre ich nach Sydney. As you can see, the first element or idea can consist of several words, like mit meinem Vater. So the verb is not necessarily the second word, but the second element of the sentence. In English, when we start a sentence with something other than the subject, it's usually followed by a comma. On Saturday morning, comma, I'll drive to Sydney. Note that unlike in English, there is never a comma in German after the first element. On the contrary, in the few instances where a comma is used in German, that is after yes, no and proper names, it's to signal that these words are not regarded as the first elements of the sentence and therefore don't affect the word order. So we have... Ja, Peter. Ich fahre nach Sydney. So far, so good. But there's a bit more to how we position verbs in a sentence in German. First of all, we have to enlarge the concept verb to the concept verb phrase. Take the sentences... Ich muss gehen. Ich kaufe ein. Ich spiele Tennis. In all these sentences, it takes more than one word to complete the idea of the verb. So what happens to the word order then? And where do all the bits and pieces of the verb phrase go in the sentence? Well, let's start with separable verbs like einkaufen, fernsehen and mitbringen. They really consist of two parts. A prefix, something fixed to the front of the verb like fern, and a basic verb infinitive like sehen. And the resulting verb is fernsehen, with the stress on the prefix fern. In the same way, mit plus bringen is mitbringen, and ein plus kaufen is einkaufen. Instead of the two English verbs to buy and to shop, we play German language Lego. Kaufen, einkaufen. Neat, isn't it? Many verbs are a bit like Lego blocks and can combine with several different prefixes to form different meanings. So abfahren means to depart, but mitfahren means to go with or get a lift. Now mitbringen and einkaufen are infinitives or dictionary forms. When one of these verbs becomes finite, in other words, it's actually done by someone and takes an ending, it splits into its two components and we get, for example, Ich kaufe ein. Or, Ich kaufe morgen ein. Or, Ich kaufe morgen in der Stadt ein. As you can see, the finite verb kaufe is the second element. The other part, 
in this case the prefix ein, goes right to the end of the sentence, forming a kind of verbal bracket or frame around all the other information. This is a general principle and applies to all situations where we have more than one word forming what we call the verb phrase. The finite verb, the one with the ending, is the second element, and anything else that completes the idea of the verb is at the end. Who knows, maybe Germans want to hold the listener's attention by saving some of the most newsworthy information up to the very end. But let's go back to our separable verbs before we have a look at some more of these verbal frames. With some verbs, the prefix has fused together with the verb stem to such an extent that they're treated like one unit and therefore stay together. The prefix is not separated from the verb. This is indicated when you speak by stressing the main verb and not the prefix, as in beantworten, bekommen, vergessen, or verkaufen. So we have the contrasting pair of einkaufen, to shop, and verkaufen, to sell, with one splitting up and the other staying together. Ich kaufe nie im Supermarkt ein. Ich verkaufe mein Auto nicht. But how do you know if a verb separates or not if you've never heard it? Well, some texts say sep or insep after the verb, while others, like ourselves, put a dot between the prefix and the verb, ein dot kaufen, and yet others put an apostrophe before the stressed element, einkaufen or verkaufen. Once you know this, Always say the word out loud when you learn and use them so that the pronunciation with the stressed or unstressed prefix becomes part of your oral memory. For those of you who like to memorize lists, the following prefixes are never stressed and are therefore inseparable. B, emp, ent, er, g, miss, fair, zer. Let's go back to our verbal brackets or frames now and have a look at other cases where we have more than one part in the verb phrase. A lot of verbs are used together with nouns or adverbial phrases to form standard expressions like tennis spielen, leid tun, ins Kino gehen, nach Berlin fahren. When you make a sentence using these verbs, again, the verb phrase forms the frame. Mein Vater tut mir heute leid. Ich gehe morgen ins Kino. Ich fahre nächste Woche nach Berlin. Ich spiele morgen mit Freunden Tennis. We imagine the sentence as a drum roll that builds up to, ta-da, the information that completes the idea of the verb. Without Leid, ins Kino, nach Berlin and Tennis, the information about what's being done is incomplete. We often only really know at the very end what the sentence is actually about. So we're building up the suspense, like in a Hitchcock movie, or in the famous words of Mark Twain. The Germans have an inhuman way of cutting up their verbs. Now a verb has a hard enough time of it in this world when it's all together. It's downright inhuman to split it up, but that's just what those Germans do. They take part of a verb and put it down here, like a stake, They take the other part of it and put it away over yonder like another stake, and in between these two limits they just shovel in German. This is especially the case with modal verbs, or the auxiliary verbs we use to form different tenses. Just to remind you, a modal verb expresses an attitude to another verb, such as I can or I'm able to dance, I must, I want, or I'm supposed to. The modal verb is finite and in the second position. The crucial information is only given right at the end by the infinitive of the main verb. Ich muss gehen. Ich kann heute nicht gehen. Ich darf heute nicht ins Kino gehen. Ich will heute nicht mit dir einkaufen gehen. This bracketing principle applies to all verb phrases, as you'll see when we learn different tenses later. What we want you to remember until then is the drumroll principle. Here's a visual aid for you. 
I represent the finite verb with a clenched fist in class, as other elements of the sentence orbit around it. So remember, finite verb, second element. Ta-da! Rest of verb phrase. That is anything that completes the information of the verb last. Are there exceptions to this rule? Well, not in normal sentences, but in some questions and in the imperative, the finite verb comes first. You've already come across questions which are answered by yes or no. This sort of question is simply formed by inverting a subject and verb, much like the English form, is he here? Ist er hier? Fährst du nach Sydney? Kann er mit uns fahren? In yes or no questions, you have to start with a finite verb, but you can still observe the drumroll principle and put anything that completes the idea of the verb at the end. Ist er immer noch hier? Fährst du morgen mit deinem Vater nach Sydney? Kann er nächste Woche mit uns fahren? The imperative form, giving a command, making a suggestion or recommendation, is the other instance where a main clause starts with a verb. Hol mir doch ein Brot. Geben Sie mir bitte das Buch. That's about it. So, wir müssen das jetzt alles... What do we have to do to everything? Wir, wir müssen, müssen das, das jetzt alles üben. üben. Practice! Yes, of course. Now we have to practice everything. And practicing the drum roll will be fun. Promise. Again, we can only marvel at the different way languages choose to express things. Not every German novel is a whodunit, but nearly every sentence is a one did what? Why would we want to put some of the most crucial information at the end? Does it make life more exciting? Well, it certainly makes life more exciting for learners of German. So let's build up the suspense and form some thrilling sentences.